величайший праздник. Важно, чтобы мы не заговорили перед тобой. Нам еще надо хорошенько поработать и попотеть, чтобы вас загнать. Yo, what's crackin'? This is Lil Lore, a gamer fool. This is my first video. I'm completely new to this type of thing and will learn as I go. I'm most interested in first person shooters, as that is my favorite genre of games. So watch this video, and if you like it, then maybe consider subscribing. Anyway, on with the video. Ukrainian developers Digital Spray Studios and Amendo Art Planes co-developed URM. It's a first-person shooter. Unfortunately, I am only aware of Amendo Art Planes co-developing one game, and that is this game. Digital Spray Studios, on the other hand, has created two titles, both being first-person shooters. URM released in 2006 and Instinct released in 2007. <laughs> some issues. For me, these issues were in-game cutscenes not loading, floor and some other textures throughout the game not rendering. If you have an AMD GPU, you may run into the same problem as me. When I pick up or grab anything, I can't see shit as well as when I take damage because the damn screen is flickering. Now, if an enemy only gets one hit on you, the flickering only lasts about a second. But if that one hit turns into multiple, then that's multiple seconds you can't see shit. Now, you can kind of see the problem here. If the screen's flickering and you can't see a thing, you just have to hit them in the last known location and hopefully you kill them. Fix my other problems. This may be due to the fact that I'm fairly new to PC gaming and don't know my way around the files very well because I wasn't able to open the games directly. So I wasn't able to install the patches where they were needed. So as I said earlier, my footage may not have certain textures in some areas and the screen will flicker when damage is taken or any items will pick up. With that being said, the game's atmosphere is unsettling. Now one thing I really do like about this game are the cutscenes. The cutscenes are amazing. The music, the animation, the style, the production, the atmosphere. I think it's just better if I show you rather than tell you. As a soldier crosses the street, the soldier is you, by the way, he is struck by a car. Waking up in the hospital, if you walk up to the window, you'll see a guy being cornered by three men in straight jackets. He shoots two and is knocked out the window by the third, carrying a stick. And... Trying to figure out 
out what the hell has happened. You can hear the screams and the groans of the mutated men and the nurses. <laughs> At this point, you'll find the wrench, which is your melee weapon. I also like the designs of the nurses being very tall, using the trope of the sexy nurse and twisting it. At the entrance of the hospital, you find some keys to a car sitting out front. Upon some research, the only name I could really find for these guys in the street jackets is is mental retards, so right, that's the only name I can find, so I guess that's what we're going with. One thing I found kind of odd. When you find notes, a voice will read the note in Ukrainian, while the note or letter is written in English. Обеспечить беспрепятственное прохождение состава через станции Комсомольская, Университет и Сталинская. Though the game is dubbed in English, these notes are still read in Ukrainian. The English voice acting is kind of... Eh. The lip syncing was completely off, but it was funny in the line delivery. It's not great, but it sure is pretty funny. Come on, move! You gave them real hell. The trouble came from the city, yes. I'm telling you, the reason is there. Have you seen what is happening? It is they who are to blame, damned wise men. If we could reach their bosses, the city council, they would surely say what we must do now. The city council, yeah. This is what acting. the hell is this? Where? Here. Here you go. Yes, give me your iron piece. Now, now it's working. Lip you need thinking. to get to the city council. The elevator is the only way out. Here is the key. There's a door in the yard. Use it. Go through the basements and the sewer and you'll reach the elevator. There will be a train. <laughs> That's your <laughs> only way of getting to the city. What? Help! You can make it! Hurry up! Ah! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> what? The fuck is that? Okay, what is that? All right, oh, that was pretty funny. The game is pretty straightforward in linearity, pretty much going from A to B with not much deviation. You may run into a locked door or gate here and there, and may need to find a key or lever, usually in close proximity to where it's needed. Levels tend to take around 10 to 20 minutes to complete, and a variety of locations like the starting hospital, farm, power plant, two city streets, and many others. There are many interesting designs to the enemies you face. Mutated people. And even that chicken, I think. I was genuinely interested in what would come at me next. One interesting design I thought was intriguing was a man with some type of fan blades attached to his back. <laughs> Fly at me, bitch. As they're called. These fan blades he uses to fly, similar to a holocopter. Wearing a welder's helmet while missing his left arm, looks to have a robotic replacement with a welding gun or rod attached at the end in replacement of his hand that he uses to smack you with. Another is the behemoth. Though having stumps for legs, they move at a decent speed, walking on their knuckles like a gorilla. Once they catch you though, they will clobber you and dish out serious damage. From a distance, they will throw canal covers at you, which do a lot of damage as well. These guys are the most powerful enemies in the game and can take the most damage, but can be taken out easier with a few bursts of an automatic weapon. Oh! 
Oh shit! One more very interesting design is that of the electrocutor. This guy is immune to headshots because his head is on his back, but his arms and legs are facing the other direction. I think it's better if I just show you rather than trying to explain. What the fuck? Okay. This guy has two methods of attack. One is to stand in place and charge an electric shot, which takes pretty serious damage. The other is he'll crawl pretty fast, kind of creepy at that, and try to pounce on you. But he can freely jump anytime, not just while he's trying to pounce on you. There are melee enemies. Enemies with handguns. Machine guns. Rifles. Shotguns. Flamethrowers. And a nail gun. Now there may be some out there that I'm forgetting, but yeah. Some of the enemies will also throw grenades, so I guess grenaders. Enemies will also attack each other. Sometimes you may stumble upon a battle that's already taking place. You can intervene or just let the battle settle itself out. <laughs> These types of interactions help immerse you into the game and gives the illusion that the world can exist without your presence. What the fuck is that? find health in the form of a little jar, or healing potion you may call it, and occasionally from a water dispenser. The game is not difficult as you will be flooded with these healing potions, and at times, too many. I only died a handful of times on this game, but that is not to detract from the fun of the game. I found it very fun, although slow paced, but atmospheric. You do not run, but walk in this game, and I didn't find that to be a problem, as the game is paced for the speed at which you move. <laughs> All damage is painful. You will die from just a shortfall that normally wouldn't kill a person. The gunplay is not great, but works well enough to keep you enjoying the play. The aiming can be considered a bit loose. Seems some of your shots may land where you're aiming, and some may not, even though you're aiming directly at an enemy. A certain enemy may go down in a single shell from the shotgun. While other times it may take two or three. Oh. What? What? Gun will kill most enemies with one or two headshots. The shotgun can be fired with one shell at a time, with a right click, or both shells with a left click. The nail 
Pearl gun may be weaker than the handgun, but can be fired quicker. Though it's not automatic, it can be fired as quickly as you can press the left mouse button. The rifle does the most damage with a single shot, but you may want to be precise because the fire rate is very slow and the reloading even slower. The rifle does have a bayonet at the end, but I found it to be pretty weak and rarely used it. You will also find a rifle with a scope later on, however it's the same gun and shares the same ammo but counted as a different weapon as it takes up another weapon slot. And this does not have a bayonet. As for SMGs, we have the PPSH-41, which does have the second most damage in terms of guns. Though it has a high fire rate, it has so much recoil, you will only want to use it in short bursts at mid to close range. Otherwise, you'll probably miss every shot. You get Molotov cocktails, which can be effective with a direct hit, killing most enemies. Though it could be a bit hard to get used to at first, they explode on contact. Ammo could be collected after killing an enemy or found lying around as you make your journey through the levels. I guess this can be considered a spoiler, so you can skip to if you don't want to see. On the level city council, you arrive at what looks to be a mansion. After killing all the guards, you walk into a room where you are ambushed. When you wake up, you have no weapons. The guard in the room is not friendly and will strike you as soon as you get close. You're soon led into a big conference room where a high ranking officer or chairman is sitting across a very long table. He seems to be depressed with all that has happened in the world. Nothing matters anymore. Nothing at all. You don't have much time, not much time. All is not lost yet. No, all is lost. There is one character I found pretty hilarious, and that is this guy. Oh, спасибо, спасибо. Ах, и мне так неловко. Ты так рисковал ради меня. Даже не знаю, чем тебя отблагодарить. Этот проход ведет в зал. Оттуда выберешься на крышу здания. Будь осторожен, они повсюду. Мне надо спешить. Okay. <laughs> what is wrong with his eyes? <laughs> the low times take a little long for this game. Not bad, but for the year this game came out and me having an SSD, they're a little long, but not a big deal. The physics in this game are pretty good. Around the time this game came out, every dev team was experimenting with physics in video games <laughs> thanks to Half-Life 2 coming out a couple of years earlier. Occasionally, he will blast an enemy with a shotgun and sometimes literally oh, fly across the arena. I find it hilarious. Boxes and other objects and some bodies can be moved if you push them. Health potions can also be destroyed. The graphics are okay for the time this game came out, but not great. However, the atmosphere is enough to carry it. Though the game does not have a lighting engine or any shader effects, but not too noticeable as the game's color scheme is on the darker side. I will not spoil the story as it's decent with a decent ending. The game length is average for a shooter, about 4-6 to six hours long. I fully recommend this game. It is fun and immersive, and you should go play it. So, as I said in the intro, this is my first video. I typically don't do any content, this will be the first. So if you have any tips or recommendations for the content in the future, then you can just leave them down in the comments. Your help is greatly appreciated. Thank you. Well, thank you for watching my first video. I'm that gamer fool, signing out. Later. Они были боевым оружием, как бы продолжение его практической деятельности.
включил исторический день.